And I think we are live. Hello again, everyone. And hi, Lovro. How are you doing? Uh, just a second. Should I join the other room? Oh, no, no, or you can stay here. Everything is fine. I can stay in the backstage. Uh, you, I don't think you are technically in the backstage, right? Or you are just in Big Blue Button with oh, us. Oh, you think? <laughs> oh, because I have two of them open. I thought there were two different rooms. One is the backstage and the other, I have no idea. Well, whichever, I can hear you and so can the stream. So don't worry too much about which is the okay, backstage. Okay, great. The front great, great, great. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing great, just to answer your question. Okay, well, splendid. So uh, I've pasted a link again on IRC if you want to ask your questions, and I'd invite you to do so because we have about nine minutes of Lover's time to answer as many of them as possible. And I'm going to start with the first one. Um, this looks great and was very well presented. Do you have plans to upstream this functionality into Emacs? Ah, uh, that's a good idea. That's something we thought about as well. Um, currently, we haven't really contacted anyone uh, to do this. Also, the, the current implementation, so as I mentioned in the, in the presentation towards the end, so we use a little bit of advice to sort of patch some functionality of query replace because not everything was easy to implement. Um, the core functionality luckily was, but there's a couple of fixes we need to apply to the message function in order to display like a nice message in the echo buffer because this doesn't happen on its own when we're using this trick with this big regex and whatnot. So I don't think that the code as it is would be upstreamable. I think probably if we wanted to upstream it, um, we would have to do some proper work on refactoring query replace itself in order to integrate all of this functionality just directly without any patching left and right. <laughs> but yeah, definitely um, something I've given some thought, but so far no, no progress on it. I haven't actually started doing anything about it. Right. So was the uh, so, so I'm curious now. You developed the feature and then you moved on to do the presentation, or did you want to do a presentation for Emacs Conf and then you worked on something like this? What, which was it first, the chicken or the egg? Yeah, yeah, it was the former. So it was definitely so. This is a problem I've been aware of for, I mean, probably a couple of years. And you know, I talked to my friend to Valentino about it, and we had like a little discussion. You know, how would we do this? And then I remember back when I was. Um, researching about this problem and the various Emacs Lisp solutions, all I could find were these solutions that would, you know, just shy away from implementing the regex case, which is the really complicated one. And um, after some discussion, my friend and I decided, okay, what the hell, let's, let's try and implement this. How hard can it be? And uh, yeah, basically in one afternoon, the idea, our little trick and the whole implementation was born. And then I think that was maybe around a year ago, maybe a bit less. And then through the months, we just thought, oh yeah, we could maybe we could present this. Maybe it would be interesting for people to see. And that's how we came up with the idea to uh, present it at Emacs Conf. Okay, great. Um, I don't see other people asking questions. So people, it's nice if I ask questions, but you know, the, the point is kind of for you to ask the questions. Uh, I see someone who's joined us on BBB, Peter. Would you like to ask a question maybe? Otherwise, I see another person uh, writing a question on the pad, so we can either move for this one. So I'll leave Peter to figure out uh, if they want to ask a question. So I'm moving on to the next question. So I, I can, uh, I can, oh, I can oh. jump in. Um, that's a that's a really well really well done talk, and really you know you really clear, clearly laid out the uh, the problem and the solution there. Um, while you. I was watching it, I was thinking the uh, maybe the nice way to Name it is just to name it query replace and query replace regex, you know, overloading the the original functions and then using a um, like a prefix number, like control control number to indicate how many um, replacements you're going to do. But maybe that doesn't work with the okay. the um, with the recursive editing stuff, which I don't use much, so I don't have a good. Um, I think it would definitely work. Uh, well, well, uh, the question is, if we just o overwrite the definitions, then, oh, well, I guess we could do that. Nothing stops us. I mean, we're in Emacs. We, we could definitely do that. And then if you give like a prefix argument, maybe it just drops you back to the original query replace. Yeah, that's an idea. For now, we decided, OK, let's just keep everything explicitly separate just to avoid any confusion. 
Yeah, I think I think that's the right thing to do for now. Well, what I'm actually thinking is that when you do query replace, it just does the regular query replace. And if you're going to do say three, three parallel replacements, then you do Control U query replace. Oh, can, sorry. Huh. Right. Control three query replace, and then that way you don't have the the, the prompt. Yeah. The yeah, yeah, final yeah. prompt that you give nothing to. Right. Exactly. That's that's actually not a bad idea. I think I like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's not it's, a bad idea. Yeah. It's always a quagmire whether to ask for an argument or to use the universal argument. Uh, <laughs> frankly, when you're working with Emacs and especially the UX side of things in the package, it's so complicated to figure out which one you want to do. And in this particular case, I think it's the better option to use the uh, universal argument or any kind of argument with a control number before. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, we have about three more minutes of questions. Uh, Peter, if you don't mind, I'll keep reading the questions in the chat. Um, did you use your pair program? Uh, sorry, did you use pair programming while developing it, it being your package, or did you work independently, alternating and reviewing with Valentino? I assume. Ah, uh, it was definitely a pair programming kind of thing. So, if I remember correctly, I was uh, sitting at the at the computer, and Valentino was in front of a whiteboard. And we were sort of just dissecting this regex and a bunch of examples and trying to uh, get these capture groups and stuff that we have to sort of remap internally, you know, to get these offsets right and avoid off by one error and stuff like that. So, yeah, definitely a team effort. Okay, great. Uh, moving on to the next question. What is your background in programming? Was it difficult to implement following the same API and architecture as what is already in Emacs? Uh -huh. um, so, so both, so maybe to just a quick backstory, both Valentino and I are actually PhD students in computer science, and we literally share an office. So that's how we even started talking about this whole thing. And we both use Emacs, of course. Um, but I don't think this was too hard to implement because luckily all of the interactive functionality, like this complicated undo, skipping, execute until the end, and so on, all of this is really just already provided by the Emacs query replace implementation. So sort of what we do is we just invoke it as a function and delegate to it and we came up with this clever trick to basically delegate this uh, multi multi replacement to this one single function that's already there so it wasn't too um too complicated all right uh and we have about two minutes to so time for the last question what did you learn about Emacs programming or programming in general while working on this project? A very, very wide question for mm -hmm, me. Mm -hmm. um, maybe one thing I would like to add to the to the previous uh, just answer is uh, I, I don't want to say like you know we're PhDs the P uh, PhD is required for this or anything not at all um, it's mostly just for a little bit of context but I think. Um, Obviously, even if you're not a PhD, I mean, you don't even require like university, uh, you know, education or anything. Um, it wasn't overly difficult to implement. Uh, sort of just read some code that's already there, and you know, uh, follow what you see, and poke poke Emacs a little bit, and do a little bit of de debugging on the internals, and you can definitely get it. So definitely not a prerequisite to have a degree or anything to do any of this stuff. Um, okay. So I, coming back so, to your last question. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going to amend a little bit the question because we only have one minute. So just one thing in 10 yeah, seconds yeah, yeah. that you've learned about this. What did I learn about Emacs programming? That Emacs is uh, so flexible that I can go and I can patch literally its message function. And that, that is how we achieve <laughs> the nice message function in the echo buffer. So I can literally All go right. and patch something as crucial as message. <laughs> That's great. That's a lovely one. And I think, again, we're going back to the philosophy of Emacs. Everything is programmable, and even changing the message function is great. All right, well, thank you so exactly. much, Lovro, and thanks to Valentino as well, who's not here, but who's contributed to this talk. Um, any last word? Uh, well, just uh, if you're going to build any solutions, try to make them like as foolproof and as 100% as possible so we get more of these goodies that are nice and robust for everybody to use. All right, lovely. Well, thank you so much, Lover, for your presentation and your answer. We'll be moving on to the next talk in thank you. just about five seconds. And I'll see you after. Bye, Lover. Yeah, bye bye. So I'm just waiting to make sure uh, my VNC is a little slow. Okay, we switched to the next talk. All right, Lover, I'm going to need to go get ready now.
Bye-bye, and thanks for your talk. Bye, thank you, see you.